Happy New Year. Let's begin in prayer. Lord, we thank you that there is nothing that can stop your word from getting to the people that you want to reach, to reaching your children. We ask you to bless this time we have together, and we ask you to open each heart and let your words enter their spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. At Christmas, I asked the question, why was Jesus born? And the answer was found in John 3.16, because God so loved the world. As I reflect on the past year, the highs and lows, and I think about God sending that baby to save us, a good friend of mine treated me to a journal, a devotional journal this year, and it begins by asking the question, who do you see in your mind when you're praying? Some say Jesus' feet. Some say they picture themselves walking through the garden. Some just like a song. Others see him on the throne. What is your vision? To be honest, I had never given this much thought. I probably spend more time rambling and not enough time listening. But I can't say that I have one image in mind when I pray. Rather, I think I usually envision whatever or whoever I'm praying for. So this is an interesting concept for me, to picture Jesus when I'm praying. Usually when I'm praying, I see a bright light, and I've kind of considered that to be Jesus. So it's giving me something to think about. Maybe it'll give you something to think about as well. But that brings me to the next question. What or who are you praying for these days? And how do you pray? Do you feel like you have a good prayer life, a closeness to God? Do you worry that you're not praying the right way or saying the right words? And if so, do you worry about your vision during prayer now? I know at times it feel, I feel like a spoiled child continuing to ask over and over and over for the same thing. Yet I know that God tells us to continue to come to him. But does he really want me to hear me over and over? Or if I'm asking over and over, does that mean that I have not fully released the outcome to him? Did I remember to pray all the prayers I wanted to pray? For all the people who asked me to pray? Did I cover my neighbors, my community, my state, my country, my, the world, those third world countries? Did I leave anything out? Did I leave anyone out? Do you ever feel this way? Do you wonder if you're reaching God's ear? We know that we are told to pray without ceasing. So God must not tire of hearing from us, even when we are repetitious. So here are some scriptures that I hope will encourage you to pray and pray without ceasing. From 1 Thessalonians 5.16 we read, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. And this is the will of God for you. Philippians 4, 6 reads, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let all your requests be made known to God. And Colossians 4, 2, Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in watchful in it with thanksgiving. And Matthew twenty one twenty two, And whatever you ask for in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call to me and I will answer you and, tell, and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. That sounds like a good one, right? 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. And this is one of my favorites. I love knowing that the Holy Spirit takes over in prayer for me when I just can't find the right prayer. Romans 8.26 Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with his groanings to deep for our words. But sometimes 
I think we make everything just too complicated. I think God intended for us to keep it simple. After all, he tells us in Matthew 19, 14, but Jesus said, let the children come to me. Don't stop them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are like these children. This holiday season, our two twin grandchildren, who are now two years old, were at our house for dinner. We've prayed with them since they were born, and they know to fold their little hands and bow their heads and say amen. But now they're beginning to talk. A lot. So I asked our granddaughter if she would say the prayer for us. She folded her little hands, bowed her head, and said, Jesus, Amen. Doesn't that say it all? As you go forth this week, think about your prayer life. Who do you see when you pray? Even if you can't figure it all out, a simple Jesus, Amen, sounds good to me. Have a great week.